Hey everyone, and welcome back to this class, Data Science, Deep Learning in Python, Part 1. In this lecture, we are going to answer a question I commonly get, which is, what is the difference between neural networks and deep learning? I hope to squash some commonly held misconceptions, and I hope this helps you gain a better perspective on deep learning, machine learning, and neural networks at a high level. The first misconception I'd like to talk about is this. A lot of people assume that to do deep learning, you have to be using convolutional neural networks and recurrent neural networks. This is very wrong. First, if you look at the name, convolutional neural networks, we see that it has the term neural networks. We don't call it convolutional deep learning. Nobody says convolutional deep learning. We say convolutional neural networks. Okay, so studying convolutional neural networks and recurrent neural networks means you're studying neural networks. Of course, it also means you're studying deep learning simultaneously. But here's another reason why that's wrong. Both of the famous CNN and RNN architectures were actually invented in the 90s. So for RNNs, the relevant building block is called the LSTM. And if you want to look up the original paper, I've listed it here. And remember, in the 90s, the term deep learning did not even exist. So to say you must be studying CNNs and RNNs to be considered as doing deep learning is just false. CNNs and RNNs were invented long before the term deep learning ever existed. Another misconception is that to be studying deep learning, the neural networks you're studying must have more than one hidden layer. This is, of course, also false, since neural networks with more than one hidden layer also existed and were researched long before CNNs and RNNs, and hence also predate the term deep learning. The fact remains, in order to understand how a neural network with multiple hidden layers works, you must first understand how a neural network with one hidden layer works. You simply can't skip this critical step and it deserves a significant amount of attention, whereas adding more layers once you already know how to deal with one layer is significantly easier. So what is deep learning? It's actually a relatively meaningless term. It's a buzzword. Someone started calling the set of neural network architectures that are popular today deep learning, and hence deep learning is just effectively a marketing term. Let's look at a diagram that I think will give you a fuller picture. Neural networks actually form a superset of deep learning. In other words, all deep learning is neural networks, but not all neural networks are deep learning. There are several types of neural networks that do not appear in modern deep learning literature. Some of these are very old, and people just don't take interest in them anymore. Some of them are just alternative models of the brain. Some examples are self-organizing maps, or SOMs. These are for unsupervised learning. RBF networks, which use a radial basis function. Spiking neural networks, which use spikes or action potentials, just like the biological brain. We have some teams that are trying to build physical neural networks using specially designed microchips that act like synapses in the brain. And if you guys are old enough to remember the Palm Pilot, Jeff Hawkins, the founder of that company, went on to start Numenta, which focuses on understanding the brain. They created something called the Hierarchical Temporal Memory, or HTM. So you can see that there are many types of neural networks that are not part of mainstream deep learning. So whenever people tell me that this course is about neural networks and not deep learning, I find it really funny because this course covers exactly the subcategory of neural networks that is actually essential to the rest of deep learning. The best way to understand deep learning is through time. So all of these concepts are important parts of deep learning literature, and it's very useful to see them chronologically. At the beginning, we have the perceptron classifier. This was invented in 1957 by Frank Rosenblatt. 
As you may have heard, its inability to classify nonlinear patterns led to the AI winter. The perceptron classifier is related to another linear classifier called logistic regression, which is the prerequisite to this course. Unlike the perceptron, logistic regression is very grounded in probability and statistics. There are also some nice relationships to the biological synapse, such as excitatory and inhibitory connections, the all or nothing principle, and so on. Recall that we sometimes call the logistic regression model a neuron. The problem is, this is still linear, and so it has the same limitations as the perceptron. But as we've seen, a very reasonable way to make a brain is to connect a bunch of neurons together, which is exactly what we did. We call this a neural network. This is when algorithms like backpropagation were invented, which happened in 1986 by Jeff Hinton. After this time, people weren't really paying attention to neural networks and instead leaned towards probabilistic graphical models. It's funny because probabilistic models used to be the new thing and neural networks were the old thing, and now neural networks are the new thing and probabilistic models are the old thing. Some believe probabilistic models may make a comeback in the near future. During the 90s, some researchers never lost hope in neural networks and continued to study them, so that's when we got CNNs and the LSTM RNN. Of course, they didn't receive much attention because few people cared about neural networks back then. And now we fast forward to the 2010s, the era of big data and massive data collection, more computing power, and so on. This gave neural networks the right environment in which to flourish. Neural networks have the special ability to increase in performance as more data is gathered. This is opposed to some other machine learning models which seem to taper off after a certain limit. This superior performance on famous benchmark data sets were what allowed neural networks to become so popular. And so people who used to ignore neural networks were now starting to pay attention. A good example of this is the computer vision community. At this point, we've hit a critical mass and soon everyone started using neural networks. And somehow during all this buzz, someone came up with the term deep learning. So deep learning is nothing but a buzzword, which was assigned to something that already existed, which was a subset of neural network research. And not only that, but remember that it's a common misconception that CNNs and RNNs are deep learning and feed-forward neural networks are not deep learning. Remember that all this stuff actually predates the term deep learning, and they are all a subset of the study of neural networks.